Today we are going to be asking God to open heavens over us. Why do we need to ask for open heavens continuously? Open heaven is spiritual illumination and deeper insight into the ways of God. Anytime heavens open over you, God takes you into deeper insight into his ways. You receive spiritual light to know the ways of God more and more. The word of God says in Psalm 25 verse number 4, Show me thy ways. O Lord, teach me thy path. That is a prayer of someone. Show me your ways. O Lord, teach me thy path. What this person is asking for is simply, O God, open heavens over me. Because when heavens open, we begin to understand the ways of God. And we begin to understand the paths of God. And anytime you understand God's ways more, you encounter his acts more. Praise God. And that is what the Bible was trying to say in Psalm 103 verse number 7. He said, he made known his ways unto Moses and his act to the children of Israel. He made known his ways to Moses, his act to the children of Israel. Meaning that Moses was a man that enjoyed open heavens. And God made his ways known to him. So the ways of God cannot be found anywhere. It is God himself that makes his ways known to man. Hallelujah. God is too far away uh, in terms of man knowing him. It takes God to reveal himself to man. Man cannot find God. God has to reveal himself to him. We understood that other religions of the world, the reason why they are different from Christianity is simply in other religions of the world, man is trying to find God. But in Christianity, God makes himself known to man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God cannot be studied. You can't study him to understand him. There is no book to read to know him. You can't find him in lecture hall like other subjects we read. Praise God. God himself makes himself known, which means it takes revelation to know God. It takes revelation to know God. Now, when we talk about open heaven, we are saying that God has opened heavens over the person and the person have now begun to know the ways of God. Now, if God wants you to go higher spiritually, he reveals his way more and more to you. The more you know his ways, hallelujah, the more you know him. So the sons of Israel, they knew the acts of God, but Moses knows his way. So Moses was now the man that God used to perform his acts, whereas the children of Israelite were beneficiaries of the acts of God that Moses, who knew the ways of God, was performing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why we talk about open heavens. Oh Lord, open the heavens over me. I want to know your ways. I want to know your ways. Hallelujah. Now, that is a big prayer and that is a big heart cry. It is people who pray like that, that see God in action in their lives. Praise God. Now, open heaven is also a deliverance from darkness to an ignorance. Deliverance from darkness and ignorance. When somebody don't know a thing, we say the heaven over the person is closed. When the person is walking in darkness, he lacks knowledge. He lacks understanding. We say the person is walking in darkness. That is Psalm 82, verse number 5. Psalm 82, verse number 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in darkness. 
all the foundations of the earth are out of course. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Um, what the Bible is trying to tell us is, if you don't know, you will not understand. And because you don't understand, you will walk about in darkness. And because you are walking in darkness, everything about the person will be in confusion. Praise God. Now, there are a lot of people that are walking in confusion. And the cure for confusion is open heaven. Open heaven. Open heaven. Hallelujah. When heavens open over you, when heavens open over you, when the heavens open over you, one thing you discover is that the things you used to be confused about before, they become clear to you. Because an open heaven comes with understanding. Praise God. I pray tonight that somebody is going to receive an open heaven. Some things you don't understand will become clear to you. Now, how many of you have maybe one day you are praying or you are studying or you are meditating, something, suddenly something you don't understand before suddenly became clear to you? Have you ever happened to you? Have you ever happened to you? You were praying or you were thinking about a thing or you were meditating or you are studying the Bible, suddenly what you don't understand before or somebody is teaching or somebody is preaching, suddenly the things you don't understand before suddenly became it's like you woke up from doing, ah, how come I didn't know this all this while? Now, that moment in which you just realize, ah, how come I didn't know this before? I now know this. Wow, there's light now. That is the moment of open heaven. Someone say, moment of open heaven. That is the moment of open heaven. At that moment, heavens open. So the things you don't understand before become clearer to you because. You just receive an open heaven. Amen. It's like there's light in this room. Suddenly, a little opening, open out, and you are standing in darkness, and that light immediately shines the ways. Ah! Then you move, or you see the things you have not been seen before, or you understood the things you have not understood before. So many of us here have encountered some moments of open heaven without knowing that what we are just enjoying is open heaven. Praise God. Amen. So is is and God works in moments. God works in moments. So there are moments in which God just open a door, open an understanding, open things for you to know and to understand that this is the meaning of this thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Or you slept and you dreamt in the night. And in the night, something you don't know before, in the night it was taught you. That is an open heaven experience. That is an open heaven experience. Now the more you keep getting these open heaven experiences the, the more you know things and the more you know the more you walk in light and the more you walk in light the faster you move hallelujah because light makes everything to be revealed while darkness conceals everything that you don't know all the portals all the bad things are concealed by darkness hallelujah number three an open heaven is the tearing down of every obstacle between God and man that is an open heaven. That is an open heaven. Obstacles between God and man are torn away. So man cannot reach God because whatever stops God from reaching out to man has been taken away. Now, God himself said, it's not as if my hand are not short that I cannot reach you. He said, but there is something called sin that has covered the pathway between me and you. So, even though I want to touch you, I cannot touch you, I cannot reach you because sin has blocked the way. So, there are, there, are, there are issues in people's life that can create close heaven over them. And when those issues are vacated, then they begin to enjoy open heaven. So, it, 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 an open heaven is the tearing down of obstacles and issues that have stopped man from reaching God and God himself from reaching man. Hallelujah. The next one, open heaven is the establishment of your faith by the visions of God. The establishment of your faith by the visions of God because faith in our personal life calls for special revelation. There are some things God must show you in order for you to have the kind of faith that is required to win in life. Amen. Amen. When you see a man or a woman of strong faith, there is something they have seen. 
from God and their faith is anchored on what God revealed to them. So we must have opened heaven and have visions of God because our faith is anchored on the visions of God. Hallelujah. And when heavens open, we have visions of God. When we have visions of God, it boosts our faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Do you know that there are some things about God you will see today? God opens your eyes to see some things about him. You begin to operate in faith. Amen. Because faith is not a mental thing. Faith is not a theoretical thing. Faith is born when God shows man some things. Amen. There are some things God will show you. You begin to walk in faith. Because of what you saw. And when people say, why are you talking like this? Why are you behaving like this? He said, there's some things God showed me. And based on what God has showed me, I am standing in the place of prayer. I am standing in faith this way because of the visions I have seen. Praise God. So everybody must have some moments of encounter with open heavens so that our faith is not based on what man said. Your faith will be based on knowledge, based on the visions of God. And based on that visions of God, you operate the way that you operate. Hallelujah. On Sunday, I, after service, we we're going to Okene, and um, I, 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 I was asking myself a question while we we're driving because I was very tired, very, very tired. And I still needed to go to Okene Church Sunday after service, despite the tiredness. Hallelujah. But I was asking myself, why are you going to Okene now? What are you going there to do? Then suddenly, the, what God showed me, before we went to establish Okene Church, hit my spirit. Once he hit my spirit, my tiredness disappeared. My tiredness disappeared because what I was doing is based on revelation. It's based on vision of God. So it boosts your faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like you got married and the marriage is having challenges. And you begin to ask yourself, why am I in this marriage? then the visions of God you received before you enter that marriage comes back. What happened immediately? Your faith jumps up. Your faith is resuscitated. So we need moments of open heaven to establish our faith in the visions of God. In the visions of God. Hallelujah. Because that is what makes people to stand strong in life, in bad times, in hard times, in good times, in hot weather, in cold weather, in the desert, in the wilderness, in the, in, in the city, in the village, anywhere. The man that has seen the visions of God is standing by faith because he has received an open heaven. This evening, somebody will get an open heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 16. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 16. Say, bless are your eyes for the sea. And your ears for the hear. Blessed are your eyes for the see. And your ears for the hear. Say with me, say, Father, blessed are my eyes for the see. And my ears for the hear. Hallelujah. You know, when I carry my Bible and I sit down to study, this is my popular prayer. Before I start studying, I say, Father, I am about to study your, your word. Blessed are my eyes for the see, and my ears for the hear. Thank you, Father. As I study the word, my eyes will see, and my ears will hear. And of course, when you sit down and you begin to study, you begin to study under open heaven. That prayer simply means, oh Lord, give me open heaven. My eyes will see, and my ears will hear. When somebody begins to operate under closed heaven, the eyes can no longer see and the ears can no longer hear. Hallelujah. What is the Bible talking about? Is it physical sight? No. Hallelujah. The Bible is talking about spiritual sight and spiritual ears because they can see and they can hear. And that is open heaven. Open heaven is the ability to see and the ability to hear from God. The ability to see and the ability to hear from God. And tonight... We will not before we leave this place some people will see and some people will hear in the name of Jesus Christ I said some people will see 
and some people will hear. I said some people will see. And some people will hear. Last Sunday, we were in Okene Church in the evening. And, and after prayer, one woman ran out and she said, as we were praying, her son is in prison somewhere. And as we were praying, God opened her eyes and she saw her son released. As we were praying, God opened her eyes. She saw her son released. She called me and she said, my son is now at home. Praise the Lord. And I said, I am coming back on Sunday, bring him to church. As we were praying, her eyes saw and her ears hear. Amen. When you go to the place of prayer, expect to open heavens. When open heavens come, you will see and you will hear. You will see and you hear. Now, some people come to the place of prayer without expecting to see anything and without expecting to hear anything. God speaks to his children. And this encounter this evening, somebody is going to see. Somebody is going to hear. I said somebody is going to see. And somebody is going to hear. Somebody is going to see. Somebody is going to hear. If you said amen, say amen again. Hallelujah. As they were, we were praying, her eyes saw and her ears heard. And within a few days, she said, what I saw in church has happened now. Why? Because the heavens opened first for her to see what heaven is about to do before it is done on earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. This evening, in the next one week, what great thing God is going to do is going to show somebody here. Hallelujah. When your heavens begin to, heavens open over you, your life and condition begins to get better. You begin to discover that you are better by this time this year than last year by this time. The last one year has brought improvement into your life. You know that heaven opened over you. Hallelujah. You begin to shine more. You begin to improve in glory, in the light which God has given to you. Hallelujah. And you begin to receive an increase in heavenly wisdom. But before we pray, please, before we pray, let me mention this quickly because they are very, very important as we pray. Keys to open heaven. Keys to open heaven. Keys to open heaven. Hallelujah. Our Father Bishop Heripo said, when you teach and you preach, give the people keys. Something they can use to experience the dimension of God you are talking about. Keys to open heaven. Number one is forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin opens the heavens. That's why the Bible said that in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 6 verse number 27. Then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servant and of thy people. When thou, when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they shall walk and send rain upon the land which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. When sins are forgiven, heavens open. Praise the Lord. You hear from heaven and forgive the sins of your servant. So there's a connection between forgiveness of sins and open heaven. When somebody decides to live in sin and refuse to repent from sin, heavens close. Praise God. But forgiveness of sin opens heaven and holiness keeps the heaven open. I say it again. Forgiveness of sin opens the heaven and holiness perpetually keeps the heavens open. You need to live a holy life after you have been forgiven. Then you begin to experience open heaven. Praise God. Number two, you stay under an open heaven commission. Open heaven commission. Open heaven church. There are churches where heavens have closed because of the multitude of iniquity and bad things that they are doing in that place. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James chapter 3 verse number 16 is important for every church to know. James chapter 3 verse number 16 and that's one of the guiding principles and guiding scriptures I use in my pastoral life. James 3, 16, so that the people of God can continue to experience his presence in the church. He said, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. There are some practices a church can enter into that can close the heaven over that church. Because the Bible says, where there's envy, where there's sin, where there's jealousy, where there's strife, where there's bitterness, that 
evil things are the things you find there, not the presence of God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Living in an worshiping and fellowshipping in an open heaven assembly. Very crucial. Number three is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Your sacrifice for God can also open heaven. Your sacrifice for God can also open heaven. Amen. Nothing God respects like sacrifice. Like sacrifice. When you sacrifice for the name of God. When I talk about sacrifice, I'm not just talking about financial sacrifice alone. It's part of it. The sacrifice of your time. The sacrifice of your talent. The sacrifice of your life. The sacrifice of your finances. For the advancement of the kingdom of God brings you open heaven. The sacrifice of praise and your worship to God. Hallelujah. They bring you open heaven. There's no time now, but you can look at that in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse number 3 and Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. You realize that sacrifice is one thing you use to open heaven. Praise God. Sometimes after you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, you have to enter the realms of sacrifice to God. When you enter that realms, you begin to enjoy open heavens. If the cloud are full, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there shall it shall lie. If the clouds are full, they empty themselves upon the earth. The Bible said that it's a principle. Every water that draws back on earth is from the earth. The earth gave it to heaven. Then the heaven, if you do geography, is not true? Uh -huh. There are three ways geography say water can go up by con conduction, by convection, and by radiation. All those send water. So every water we receive as rainfall didn't come from heaven. It came from where? It came from the earth. It is the earth that sent the water droplets to heaven. And when the cloud becomes full, it returns back again. So anytime you see rain, every drop of rain came from the earth. Amen. And the Bible says that the spiritual things are also like that. When you are doing your sacrifice, little, little sacrifices to God, keep doing it. Keep serving God. Keep doing what you are doing. Keep giving to the advancement of the kingdom. Keep doing it. The Bible says that a day will come when this cloud over you will be full. And what people will see is the rain of his blessings falling on you. Hallelujah. So the heavens open because little, little sacrifices have been going up there. Number four, I think now, number four is your titan. Your titan, your decision to partner with God financially for the advancement of his kingdom can also be a source of open heaven to you. Praise God. This titan is not something somebody enforce. That's why we don't have tight card in this church. But we believe that if you understand what it means and how it will bless you, there will be no argument from anybody that can stop you from paying tight. As I am standing like this, no theology can stop me from paying tight. Because it is my relationship with God, I pay my tithe as a covenant son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now, says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven. I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And there shall be not be room enough to receive it. Praise God. And I believe in the Bible. I'm a Bible practitioner. I practice it. Amen? It's not a debate. It's a, it's a revelation that God has shown to me and I practice it and it works and I've seen the Lord blessing me. And there are many of you in this church who pay your tithe faithfully and I'm sure you have reports. You have evidences. You have testimonies to show that it keeps your heavens open. Praise God. Amen? So what I get when I pay my tithe is not money. I get what is called open heaven. Open heaven. It's not kalo kalo. You put, give God 10 nera, then he gives you 100 nera. No, that's not what God is saying. God is talking about open heaven. Say, I will open the heavens over you. Praise God. Now number five, quickly, is dedication. 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 To dedicate everything. Dedicate your house. Dedicate your, 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 your children. Dedicate your business. Whatever is dedicated to God enjoys open heaven. Praise God. So if you bring a child to the altar and say, Lord, 
I dedicate this child to you. What you are simply asking God to do is to open heaven over the child. If you dedicate your business to God, you are simply saying, oh God, let heavens open over my business. Hallelujah. That's what it means. Praise God. So dedication, learning to dedicate our lives, our, our, our businesses, our, 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 our finances, our work, our career, our children, and everything that we own and we have to the almighty God opens heaven over it. Praise God. Amen? Why? Because when you dedicate anything to God, the blood of Jesus destroys every yoke. Every negative power that oppresses there, the blood of Jesus destroys it. Because when you bring anything to the altar, what is on the altar is the blood. When you dedicate anything to Jesus, you have asked Jesus to cover it with his blood. And any negative happenstance or events surrounding that thing is broken because it has been dedicated to Jesus. Number six, which is the last one, is prayers. Prayers. Prayers, like we'll shortly do. Prayers. Be involved in prayer. Luke chapter 3, verse number 21. Luke 3, verse number 21. I want us to look at that scripture, everybody. Luke chapter 3, verse number 21. When all the people were baptized, all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was baptized and while he prayed, the heaven was open. While he prayed, the heaven was open. While he prayed. So it was not as if they just baptized Jesus and heavens open. You follow what I'm saying now? Other people were baptized like him. But the difference between him and the others was he was not only baptized, he was also praying. While he prayed, the heaven was open. While he prayed, while he prayed, the heavens was open. So if you are used to prayer, if you are a prayerful person, you are actually living your life under what? Open heavens. Because prayer opens heaven. Prayers open heaven. And if a child of God knows that prayer opens heaven, it means that you pray every day. Is it not true? You pray every day, you pray every evening, you pray every afternoon because you have realized that the only way you can live under open heaven is prayer. Now, those who neglect prayer, though they are children of God, but they neglect prayer, what, do they, what happens to them? They live under closed heaven. He was baptized while he prayed. While he prayed. Why he prayed. But if you don't understand this, you will think that as soon as uh, they put Jesus in the water to baptize him, heavens open. If it was like that, then everybody who came for baptism should also have an open heaven. Are you hearing me now? Are you following me now? It means that all the people that came for baptized by John should have had an open heaven. But the Bible said that others were baptized. And Jesus, when he was baptized... And after he was baptized, while he prayed, heavens opened. While he prayed, heavens opened. 